and welcome to North Shore tonight. I'm Jennifer Gluns and with me again I have Jackie Maud. Hi. Hello, welcome back. Thanks. Here we are once again mm -hmm. on the fun set of North Shore tonight. Mm -hmm. And we have once again an action-packed show for you so you're gonna wanna watch the whole show here. We'll have Peter Patterson who is a mainly glass artist who's gonna show us some of his work and we have some of his slides so that ought to be interesting. Yeah, it looks like some beautiful stuff that he has too. Pretty cool. Yeah. I, I was very I, I saw his artwork actually in a restaurant, and I asked who it was. Oh, so, what restaurant? Melange mm. in Wilmette. Mm. Where is that? Excellent food. It's right on Green Bay and Plaza del Lago. You'll have to go in there. It's fabulous food. Very what, good. What kind of food is it? Melange Italian? Um, it has, and actually, they go to American cuisine of all different types. Mm. So it's not just, but um, it's excellent. I got it. It's excellent food. But also on the show, now we can't go off the subject here because we're going to be leading right in here. Run down. Yes, we have Rob Logan and Dan the cameraman. No, <laughs> Dan the surfing man. Um, you'll see that later. That joke will come up. You'll all share on that one. Um, we have the state doubles champions will be on the show this evening, and they'll be able to talk about their championship. And, and also joining us once again, he was here once before, and we were all so impressed with him, we invited him to come back again. Rob Brahms, who is the president of Record Hit, will be here. And we have some exciting hits that were recorded for you to view, so you don't want to miss that. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that we guarantee you will never see again. Yeah, the television debut of Jackie Mudd <laughs> singing solo, so you want to watch the credits and listen, because and honest, it really is fabulous. Oh, we well, were all very you. impressed with it. Thank so you. You want to see that. And also... Um, name, that movie. name that movie, as always. As always. Wonderful prizes. Yes. If you can name that the movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> Watch that, Kalu. Okay, so that's the rundown, and that's what you'll be seeing. And coming up next, we have Peter Patterson, and he'll be coming, telling us all about glass, glass art. And you want to stay tuned. We'll have lots more North Shore tonight coming up in just one moment. Crusaders, Batman and Robin are back to battle their arch enemies on the Family Channel. But with the help of the trusty bat phone and the cable guide, law-abiding citizens everywhere will be able to track them down at a moment's notice. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Yes, these crafty crime fighters are always ready to roll on the Family Channel. And together with the cable guide, that's a dynamic duo you can count on. It's Husky football. Six exciting weekends packed with Division 1A college action. Tickets are on sale now. Call the Husky ticket office at 1-800-332-HOWL. back to North Shore tonight. I'm Jennifer Gluns and with, with me right now I have Peter Patterson who is a graphic slash glass artist. So why don't you tell us what type of art that actually is? Well uh, I got a degree in commercial art which is graphics and I eventually got into uh, glass blowing so I kind of incorporated the two together. 
Sorry. Okay, why I don't the we term show them one art. of your pieces right there? And uh, I don't know if you can get a close up on this, but. Yeah, here, I'll hold it. Why don't we use this? This is uh, one of the new paperweights I'm doing, which I'm combining a, a lot of tech, different techniques that I've learned and uh, acquired. I don't and know. I like we'll to think of each one as, as basically an illustration. Um, convey a lot of information that I'm trying to put in each piece. Okay, where did you go to college? I uh, got a degree in um, Cleveland, Institute of Art. Okay, and we already went over what your degree was. Right, I got a degree in um, um, illustration. Yeah. Okay, and um, the communications art, now that, that you, so therefore it would be like advertising, do you do advertising type of things? I know that uh, where I saw your art was a melange restaurant, mm -hmm. and um, you have all different types of not only murals, but there were there was stuff all over. Yeah, yeah there was all different, work. and I didn't know that you had done all of it. Yeah, well, and that's how I get yeah, yeah, right of myself. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> well, nice. <laughs> it's your sister, you know. Right, that's right. It's she a family-run restaurant, and uh, uh, I did help with all the decorations and, and uh, the art and. Well, the whole decor part. in there is, yeah. is really nice. So you helped do that? Mm hmm Okay. And um, where, did you want to be, you, uh, let's go over your concept. Why don't we explain uh, what an artist, that it's kind of your theme. Why don't you tell us what that is? Uh, in glass, as right. far as glass? Yeah, okay. as far as uh, glass goes. Well, I see glass as being uh, very fluid in nature. And uh, what I try to capture in all my pieces is um, the uh, suspension, uh, within it as far as putting colors and uh, images and I do that by using powders, overlays, um, cane, things that I've prepared ahead of time. Uh, I think of them as being some, somewhat aquatic. On each piece I try to make it kind of a, a, an inner world or a habitat, if you will. Okay. Uh, the theme that he sent me, <laughs> and it's very, but in simple terms is what it is, it's like a child looking into a fish tank and he wanted to capture the world of the fish with the bubbles and how, the colors and how neat it is. And if you've ever, and I don't know if you have a fish tank, but we do at our house. Sure, that's and, what I grew up with. Right, right, and my nephews are just mesmerized by it. And when I read your theme, I was mm -hmm. like, that is so true of a child looking into a, a, a fish tank and how the aquarium always amazed kids. And that's always some place that you know that you can get, let them sit there for an hour and they'll sit still. True. You know, yeah, take into the aquatic the aquarium. And when you look at the paperweight, it, this is exactly, and you can look at this for hours and find new and different things in there by just turning it or twisting it. And is this a paperweight? Yeah, it's a paperweight. But be what a paperweight. A paperweight. <laughs> yeah, you can use it for anything. This is just to sit on a table or most, whatever. That's what most people do. They use it as a centerpiece or conversation piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, where could someone get your artwork? I'm in a lot of the North Shore galleries. Um, just to name a few, I'm in uh, the Artisan Shop in Plaza del Lago in Wilmette. Um, I'm in City Woods in Highland Park. I'm in the Illinois State Building in uh, the Artisan Shop there. Okay, uh, and besides glass art, what else do you do? I do, I still do graphics on the sides, um, spot illustrations here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly I'm focusing my work into the glass. I have a line of pins that I, I sell. The bolas. The bolas and the, that yeah, you're interested The bolas in. is what I saw, <laughs> and that's what I was, well, actually, the artwork, too, the paintings. The paintings. And I still do The murals. Paintings. There were also wall hangs. There's mm -hmm. a wall hang. Did you do that also? Yeah, I did do that. That, uh, that derived, uh, I call that a weeping rainbow, and I uh, got the idea in college. It was uh, from a banner competition I did, and I won the uh, first prize, I think it was, and uh, I just developed the idea and made one for the restaurant. I can make them in various colors. Okay, we screens. have we have some of your slides okay. of some of your work that you sent me. So why don't we roll that and we'll just talk over it and you can kind of explain to us what each the one is. what they are. Yeah, sure. if it's a, you have brought some of them with you, but I'm not sure if them if they are. So if the tape is ready, we can roll it while we're talking. There, if you can see on the monitor, oh, okay. I don't know which yeah. one's easier uh, for you. That's a vase that I did. Uh, it's about 12, 12 inches high. And uh, very uh, has a, has an appeal of Alaska, sort of what I had in mind. Okay. Now this is one of the newer paperweights I'm working on. It uh, I'm working more on the interior where I'm bringing the bubble up through the center. And I noticed have, this one have, you have uh, here yeah, did that. Yeah, uh, it has kind of a, a barnacle, a sea barnacle in the center. This is one of the pins that I'm doing. Uh, I, I use 
Those are from the overlays that, that I put inside of my art. It's classic. The bolas were similar to yeah, that. Yeah, those are that very shape. similar to the bolas. Mm -hmm. I like the triangular shape. I use that a lot in my work. That's what I do too. Uh, this is a platter. This is oh, about 20 inches in diameter. Uh, it's just the colors are very colors hard. are really, yeah, really nice in that. I like the black yeah. and white image on the red and the green. This is an unusual use of color. This was the blue. This is the blue one. This is, uh, I like this one. This was a, a strong piece that I did. It I almost looks clear, like a flower. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's what I have in mind. I wrap clear glass on the back. I spin clear glass on the back, and it uh, adds as a uh, an extra texture within when the light shines on it. Uh, this is one of the clocks that I do. Uh, this is fusing. I incorporate uh, the face is a fuse piece of glass that I make, and then I'm in the background is uh, a mixed media of plaster boards and things like that. Uh, this is a slide I use to get into a lot of the shows that I do. Uh, it's a black vase uh, with various um, overlays this on it. This was a beautiful vase. This is I one like of my stronger pieces. How tall pieces. is that? Is that a big vase? Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good size. It's about 20 inches tall. This is another pin. I like to think of each pin is a small little painting in itself. I I thought these were very neat. I you can't to, find uh, I like individual like very different items, and definitely this is what they were. Mm -hmm. This is very similar to the one you. This brought. is similar to the paperweight. I mean the perfume bottle that I'm doing right now. In the perfume bottles, I'm I'm incorporating a lot of uh, powders and fritz to give uh, more of a background color. I don't know if you can see it in this one or not, but uh, okay, we'll come uh, back on that. One. Okay, and this, and this is, is another paperweight. paperweight where I put all the, uh, the decoration on the surface. This is an older one, and this is how I used to, to do a lot of them. I still do that on occasion, but now I'm starting to get more to the interior of the glass. This is a clock upside down. But, uh, oh, it's, it's upside down? Yeah. I'm sorry. That's, right. That's my fault. That slides <laughs> in. Okay. But it uh, gives you an idea. It's just a, another variation. Actually, this piece was a commission to uh, match the colors in, in their uh, kitchen, I think it was. And this is another platter. Uh, this one reminds me a lot of a flower, uh, the, the way the, the petals are coming out from the center. Boy, that's neat. Are those hard to do, the platters hard to do? They are, they take a lot of work. This they're they're the very physical. The yeah, they're very physical in, uh, in holding the glass, because yeah, you're working off a rod, and you try to imagine 20 pounds on the end of a rod. And the, the fulcrum weight does Wait, take a lot. Wait, it's spinning on the end of the rod? Yeah, I'm working with a long rod. Uh, and uh, there's a big lot of a glass, maybe 20 pounds, on the <laughs> end of a rod. So you try to imagine so you know, hoisting kind of it around working and, and working with it. Yeah, it is, it is a, a physical uh, type of a thing, particularly in the larger pieces. OK, um, what about, do you, do you commission for people if someone, like, you, I guess you said that clock. Right. So uh, you yeah, will I do that. A lot of times that happens. Uh, somebody wants to match a particular color in their sofa with their, their wall. And, and uh, usually I, I have a numerous uh, array of colors. So I let them choose from the different colors and, and make the piece up. So you're mainly working with glass? Pretty much. No, I do the same thing with, uh, uh, I call them sofa paintings. I've done a lot of, of that sort of thing where, um, they, again, they want to match colors. With, with their backgrounds, and I'll show them an array of uh, different designs that I have, and then we go from there. Okay. Um, once again, why don't we go over where they can get your art? Okay. And yeah. if you would like to give a phone number, that's more than welcome, because okay. I know there might be some people that'd be interested, especially there's a lot of remodeling going on around here. Yeah. I know just driving uh, around, I see people are adding additions to houses, and this would be a great way to get into this kind of artwork, and this is the kind of stuff, stuff I really like, so obviously that's why I had you on. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. So uh, why don't you give it? Uh, well, I could school? give you my studio phone number. That's okay. uh, um, area code 708-945-9039. And uh, you can re usually reach me in the evening. Um, I'm represented in City Woods in Highland Park, um, Unique Presence, which is in Chicago. Um, the Illinois Artisan Shop, which is in uh, Illinois State Building, uh, the Artisan Shop in Plaza de Lago, and a lot of them. <laughs> I go on okay, and, and also path Melange and, Restaurant. If and Melange like Restaurant. To see sure, if they want to see a very good display of his art, and which is almost like his own studio. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be because it's got all different kinds of stuff, and the bolas that all the waiters have on it were designed and made by Peter. So you'll want to see them. Thank you for joining sure. me. Thank I really you, appreciate it. 
And coming up next, we'll have Rob Logan interviewing uh, the state double champions from Nutrier. So please stay tuned. We'll be back with more North Shore tonight coming up in just a minute. Yeah. Kick up your heels with a cable guide in November for TNN star-studded music specials. Join Ronnie Millsap for a sentimental stroll through the early days of rock and roll. Settle in for the soothing sounds of Lyle Lovett. Sing along with the music magic of Marie Osmond. Spend an evening in Russia with Roy Clark. And hit the road with Ricky Van Shelton. TNN, it's an irresistible recipe for country favorites. And the cable guide is your main menu. your Christmas seals, remember, over 23 million Americans suffer from chronic lung disease. So if you support the work of the American Lung Association, there's no telling who you might help. North Shore tonight. I'm Dan Olson. I'm here with Kim Anderson, Wendy Fix, Holly Rogers, and Mary Ritchie. And they are the four of the top six Nutrier tennis players for the varsity team that just recently competed in the state tennis tournament. And I'm going to first start by asking them uh, how did the weather affect the game that you guys just played? Um, well, first of all, I think that the weather for us, because tennis is usually played, I mean, like, it's main. You're, you play mainly in the summer, so it was sort of hard for us to get used to the weather. And plus, we had to go indoors, and so um, it sort of threw, up, threw us off balance because we've been playing our whole season um, outside in good weather. So I think it, it threw us off balance a little bit. Yeah, and it was also hard having to go from different <clears throat> sites. So you had to, from, as soon as you were done with one match, you had to rush over to another site. And that made it hard too. Yeah, and also you're not used to like playing at a different school and just inside. It just it was sort of weird. And the fans couldn't get into it because there was a window blocking the players from the fans. So you, they couldn't cheer you on, really. Yeah. There was. Um, in high school tennis, there are three categories of competition: singles, doubles, and the team tournament. Is it difficult sometimes when you have to play against each other in singles or doubles? Yeah, like the hardest, the most competition we have is within our own team. So, um, you know, that's probably where we get a lot of our competition. So it's hard on each of us as individuals to do our best while we're playing some of our best friends. But um, as a team, we're pretty strong, and we all, I mean, we all support each other pretty much. So it works out pretty well. Okay. Do, well, does the closest of the team, to, uh, um, in general, help the team? Do you think? Oh, totally. Yeah, it's I important. Think so. It's important to have that for. Um, for the support, I mean, because if you know that the people are behind you on the team, then the, that makes you do all the better. Yeah, it makes a difference. Okay. Um, do you believe if there was a backdraw at this year's state tournament that the outcome would have been different? It's not how, definite. How it was canceled? Yeah. It's hard to say. De but. Definite, but might have helped a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to say because we had, you know, we had a lot of hard matches and you know, you could always say like, oh, well, we lost because we were inside and we couldn't play outside. But like, I, I, I think that there, there would be a total difference in the turnout if, um, if we could have played outside. Mm -hmm. With uh, the support of your fans. Yeah, and totally. All that. Um, did you plan on uh, like going neck and neck with uh, Homewood Flossmore the whole time? Or yeah, we knew they were going to be. expected? Yeah, that, we knew they were going to be. The toughest competition. They were real strong from the start uh -huh. of the season. Okay. Well, how did you all get into tennis, anyways? Um. Yes, my grandma played, and my my family plays, and just 
Yes, I, I heard. You, I heard your uh, grandmother was in Wimbledon. Is that correct? Uh, um, yes, but <laughs> that's I, don't, I don't know if that's like the main reason my my whole family basically likes the sport. Okay. Anybody else? Well, my dad. Um, he's a tennis pro, so he taught me how to play, and my brother plays tournaments, and it's usually the family thing. Like, usually the most of the family plays. Yeah, it, yeah, that's like with me. My dad is a tennis pro too. That's how I got into it. <laughs> and, um, okay, Can you, how, how did you two start? I don't know, it was just my, my whole family played. And so that's just basically how I got started, was just that it was a fun sport for my family, so they got me involved in it pretty early. Yeah, also it's like around here, it's just, there, are, there aren't a lot of women's sports that like were popular at the time that we were little, so uh -huh. tennis has always been a popular sport. Okay. Well, um, out, of, out of season, uh, what kind of stuff do you guys do to stay in you know, tennis shape besides just playing? Do you just play in uh, any tournaments or anything like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a bunch of tournaments. Yeah. In the winter, winter it's, tournaments. yeah, you usually just practice for, like, get ready for summer and stuff like that. And do you practice as a team or individually? or? Uh, individually, but a lot of us play together, like, the same places, but individually pretty much. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do, you, do you all have a greater determination this year I, for, ne for next year to come back and win the title back? Yeah, I think we have to be Well, not you, because you're a senior. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's going to try to make us work harder. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And we, we do want, I think there is some revenge factor yeah, in there. Yeah, we have to be home with Lothmar. Yeah. And beat the Oakfords. <laughs> we're going to have a lot of the same players as, as you had last year. Is it, uh, do you think you're going to be a really strong team next year? Yeah, I think, I think so. If everyone works hard, and mm -hmm. I think we have a chance. Okay, great. Um, okay, I guess that's about wraps it up there. Um, when we leave, we're gonna um, look at some clips from the highlights of uh, the state tournament, and then when we come back. We're gonna talk with. We're gonna see uh, Rob Logan with Courtney Mill, Megan Malky, and girls coach uh, Mary Jo Timmis. Welcome back to North Shore tonight. I'm Rob Logan, and welcome to another sports segment. We want to thank uh, Dan Olson and uh, Wendy Fix, Kim Anderson, Holly Rogers, and Mary Ritchie. But now we have the other two members of the top six New Trier Varsity girls tennis team. They also won the 1989 State Doubles Championship on October 21st at the State uh, Tennis Tournament at Prospect High School in Mount Prospect. They join us with their coach, New Trier Girls Varsity Head Tennis Coach, Mrs. Mary Jo Timmis. We welcome Megan Mawicki, Courtney Mill, and Mrs. Mary Jo Timmis. Uh, Mrs. Timmis, first of all, why and how uh, and when did you uh, 
decide to team up uh, this formidable duo of uh, Megan and Courtney? Well, I think it, uh, we had done a lot of practicing with various combinations. And um, Megan, of course, had the experience from last year. And so we wanted to, uh, to uh, find somebody that uh, would be a good combination with her because we knew that she was a top player. And Courtney has always been one of our outstanding doubles players because she's a very uh, aggressive kind of player. And um, so it just was a matter of working the combinations until we could come up with, with what seemed to be uh, best for the team. And that was, uh, I've, you know, they seemed like the two that perhaps had the best chance to win a state title. When you teamed them, and they first were teamed at the September 23rd Prospect uh, Tournament, ironically beating uh, Tina Sook and Gozi Okorafor, who they beat for the uh, state title at the same site, when you teamed them, did you think they could go on to win the state title? Um, definitely, after they had uh, beaten them uh, in that particular match, we naturally did. And that doesn't always mean that you know it can happen because the, it, they can uh, can reverse the results at any particular time. But I think that they both continued to uh, to work hard, and they couldn't just rest on the fact that they had beaten them one time. And I think the effort that they put forth uh, evidently uh, was what what paid off in the end because they played a even better match the second time that they played them. Yeah, three-setter. We'll talk a little more about that. But, uh, Megan, you were in the state doubles final last year with Susie Jacoby, another uh, very talented team. Uh, that, last year, though, uh, you took second. This year, you won it uh, with Courtney. Was it a goal for you at the beginning of the season to uh, win the state doubles title this year? Well, I mean, yeah, it's always a goal, but um, especially after getting in the finals and we'd already beaten the team that we lost in the finals coming in second, I mean, not so much revenge, but you just want it more. You've been there before, and you just know what it's like, and it really mean, it means a lot more. I mean, being a junior and last year as a sophomore, that it just it's a lot more special. <laughs> I mean, of course, winning it. But did um, you have any idea you would be teamed with uh, Courtney for the stretch run? Not at all. I don't even think we practiced together until we were just put together one week. I mean, I'd never played with you. We've played with so many different people. I guess um, we both played the backhand side. We preferred that side. And we both had pretty good overheads. I mean, they're all right. So we never, we we're like the same. So we never, I, I don't think Miss Tim has ever thought to put us together because we kind of had the same game or we like the same side. Courtney, were you uh, expecting, you had played singles before. Were you expecting to play doubles this season, your senior year? Well, not really expecting, hoping, I think. But um, you never know really what to expect. It's pretty much down until sectionals you don't really know well you know singles or doubles but you're not really sure what you're playing it's a um, run around just because everybody's um, pretty equal and you have to mix it up until you know what's the best for the team how soon after you started playing with Megan did you know that you were really a formidable duo um, well, it, I think playing Sook and Akora for really psyched us up and showed us what we knew we could do. You know what I mean? So, I know we were pretty psyched after that match. Well, you said, Mrs. Timmis, that they uh, both have classic returns uh, for doubles. But then again, as Megan said, she thought you wouldn't team them because, uh, uh, because of that uh, factor that uh, they both play the backhand return. So. Mm -hmm. uh, what um, uh, swayed your decision? Well, with the experienced players such as they were, I, you know, I think that they both understood the concept of doubles, which is a uh, serve and volley game. And I think that to be able to put them in the uh, position of, uh, of one person, you know, who do we think has the best, re then it came down to which side could you return, uh, have the best return from. And Courtney has a chip return from the forehand side and Megan has an extremely awesome topspin return on both the forehand and the backhand side. So it was just made sense for us to, to uh, try it you know, that way. And as I say, it uh, you know the fact that they both knew how to play doubles, it's very easy. It was easy for each of them to, one or the other, to switch sides. Okay. Well, you started to. Uh, could you give us a little assessment of uh, why they were so good and went undefeated and went on to win the state doubles title? 
what could they do best? Well, I think that they both had uh, good, consistent um, serves, and uh, Courtney especially has a has a spin serve, and which is uh, allows her to come uh, in close to the net, and it also allowed uh, Megan to be very aggressive at the net and to put away some some crisp, clean volleys, and um, Megan's serve likewise uh, was was quite consistent. Hers probably a little bit more powerful and with maybe a little less spin but also allowed Courtney to be aggressive at the net. And I think that that was really, um, you know, the, um, the main uh, force that, that, that they had. Good overheads, of course, that goes along with the, uh, the same serving as the service motion. And then, you know, the return of serve was very critical. I think in doubles, the return of serve is most important than the serve in that um, order, and then the rest of it follows. Courtney, what do you think your toughest match was at the state tournament? tournament was it the final or another match um, they all seemed pretty tough I think um, the toughest was even the first day um, when we waited around all day and it was raining and snowing and um, and then we switched to indoors and we were nervous about the state tournament to begin with and then we weren't really sure what to expect or anything and um, I think the first few matches seemed a lot harder than when we started to get into it. The last day, um, I think um, we just were ready and psyched up for it. Well, plus you got to go outside. Uh -huh. yeah. And plus outside helped a great yeah. deal. Uh, about the final, uh, Megan, uh, you lost the first set to him 4-6, but you came back strong. What were you thinking about after that uh, first set? Well, we knew that we had beaten them before. We had lost the first set before when we played them like 6-2, and it was 3-2, and we knew that we were at the same point in the finals we had been with them before, and we came back and won it. And um, the match had turned around before, and we knew we could turn it around again. They kind of got down. All we knew, we had to just get pumped up and psyched and more aggressive. They kind of took the way and not took that net away from us in the first set. We said be aggressive and more powerful and just no, we can do it. Is that the key to victory in uh, doubles, taking control of the net? Definitely, yeah. And uh, when, what do you feel was the turning point of that uh, final, uh, the state final championship match? Um, I think we are 2-1 or 3-1 in the second set. I think it was 2-1, right. You're and down, one of us love 40, 40 you're and serving. And we came back, yeah. and we got up 3-1, and that game really they were very down after that game. I mean, they had a, they had a chance to break us and tie us at two all and be back in the match. But um, we stuck in there and won it. So, I mean, it just pumped us up, and we got really excited after we were up three one. It was our first big lead. We we were up two breaks, so we got ahead. Courtney, would a key statement about your championship be that? With all the weather problems, uh, you might have been disappointed about the team title results and going indoors to outdoors and moving uh, uh, to another court during the match and losing the first set. All of that, you came back from a lot of adversity to win the state uh, doubles title. Is that a, a key uh, a statement about how you won it? Um, definitely. I, we were very disappointed about um, the whole situation um, with the weather and everything and um, I think our team was really excited. I know I was um, personally because I'm a senior and Holly Rogers is a senior too so it was our last year and we would have liked to have won it again just because it's our last year and we've won it how many years now? Like four? Well, five? It was six of the last nine. Six of the last it? nine years mm -hmm. and um, when the team uh, lost except for Megan and I on Friday we didn't really think there was a chance for the team left, so we really just, that made us want to do it more for, um, for, everyone. for everybody. <laughs> just to get the title for our team, even if we couldn't get it for first place. Well, you'll have four of these top six back um, next year. What are you looking for? Of course, to try to win the state title back, but uh, uh, are you looking for a strong team again? Well, I think we're going to be strong. Uh, certainly, as uh, evidenced by the high finish that we had this year, and four of those six girls will be back. We naturally will miss the uh, help from uh, Courtney and Holly, but we have um, three other juniors who uh, 
were uh, top players on the team that uh, were Greer Gilson, Sarah Jacoby, and Noreen Rana were three, and we've got some real hungry kids who played on the junior varsity team. And I think that, that these girls who played in, the, uh, in the, ma the, the matches leading up to state and then being at state certainly, you know, just gives them, uh, you know, Megan explained it as she was hungry from last year. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody, you know, really has that taste uh, of, uh, you know, being coming close to victory. There are other schools, of course, who then you know, are going to feel the, kind of the same way. So we've got our work cut out for us, but I think certainly we have as good a chance as anybody. Well, Courtney, unfortunately, you uh, won't be back. You're a senior. Any, um, any college plans right now? Um, nothing definite. I, I do want to play um, wherever I go. And look, that's sort of... Um, what I'm looking for in colleges first is if they have a good team and a team I, you know, I want to play on, good tennis. And, um, but nothing definite yet. A lot of applications out. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, good luck to you and Megan, good luck Thank in your you. senior year. Thanks. And uh, thanks for coming in. Congratulations again, Mrs. Timmis. Good luck next thank season. You. We want to thank Mrs. Timmis, Megan Mawicki, Courtney Mill as well as Wendy Fix, Kim Anderson, Holly Rogers, and also Mary Ritchie. For North Shore tonight, I'm Rob Logan. Don't go away because there's more to come. coming home to square dancing because it's good, clean, fun. Yeah, that means you. For further information on where you can learn to square dance, call. Twenty minutes ago, this man's last shred of dignity was stripped right off his back. Where do you go when your world is this cold, this cruel? He got help at the Salvation Army. They got help from the United Way. Thank God the United Way got help from you. The United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. Welcome back to North Shore tonight. Uh, right now, it's everyone's favorite time in the show, and that's Name That Movie, where you can call in and be a winner. So you'll want to get your phones ready, and this is the prize, a Chicago Bears water bottle. Although the Bears aren't doing the best that we'd <laughs> like them to do right now, <laughs> we're still going to give away the water bottle and a button for the Survivor Series wrestling. So you get a button and a water bottle. And Jackie can read the clue. And remember, as always, this is also the beat norm to the telephone contest. Yeah. And this one is pretty easy. So if you know it just by having us read the clue, you might want to call in then because Norm has got those quick fingers. So this is the clue. Professor Ronald Reagan treats the famous Simeon as his own child to prove that nurture is more influential than nature. Hmm, what could it be? I think that one's going to be pretty easy. So we should be hearing the phones ring any minute. I wonder, I wonder if we have to refer to Ronald Reagan as former President Professor Ronald Reagan. Do we have to do that? <laughs> Jackie, Is it really why important? don't you choose whatever <laughs> way you want to? I think that'll cover well, it. Well, no, now they knew that, what, what year, maybe look at the copyright of this book. Oh. If you know the answer to that question, call in and let us know. What you give me a prize? <laughs> what the heck? We'll find out. Sure. You know, just a little added extra something. So it's beat norm. Give us the answer to my question and name the movie, and um, we'll even let you take a little peek at the clip. So watch this, and let's start ringing the phones, okay? Hang on, Jane. I'll be right there. Be careful that you're not setting me both right here. <laughs> I 
Now, just hang on. Don't move. You'll be all right. I thought you said Bonzo wasn't up here. Well, he wasn't. Well, he is now. Bonzo, you get down before I tan your hide. Ah! No! Bonzo! Where is it? We have no fire. Somebody called the fire department from this house. You know, there's a law against turning in a false alarm. Who's falsing an alarm? Our monkey's up a tree. Well, Professor Boyd, what are you doing up in a tree with a... You say a monkey? Would one of you public servants come up and help the young lady down? You heard the professor. Jennifer. Okay, welcome back. That was the movie, and Jackie, you want to read the clip one more time? Sure, those phones have been ringing, so I, know, I hope we, have we, have some, we might have multiple answers here tonight. Former President Professor Ronald Reagan treats the famous Simeon as his own child to prove that nurture is more influential than nature. Oh, I'll never forget when I was watching um, Back to the Future, you know, and um, he had gone back in time, and, or was it before when he was talking to the doctor? Oh, and he went to visit the yeah. doctor, and he said, yeah, and you'll never believe it. He said, who's president in 19, I think at the time it was 1987, he said, Ronald Reagan. He said, the actor? <laughs> <laughs> so that was, I thought that was so funny. So, yeah, okay, well, well, we have a winner, mm -hmm. and I'll dial the number. <laughs> this is, yeah. Um, okay, what's, let me get this. Okay, it's two. <laughs> we don't want anyone getting the number. Hello? I'm still ringing. Hello? Is Hi. Jennifer there? Just a minute, Matt. She's calling? North Shore tonight? Hold on. I don't think she knew that we're calling. Jennifer, I hope you're by your phone. She's probably watching TV. You're going to win this great water bottle if you yeah. can tell us what the name of the movie is. Yeah. And the pin. Yeah. And this fabulous pin. Hello? Hi, Jennifer? This is Jennifer and Jackie calling from North Shore tonight. Can you name that movie? Bedtime for Bonzo. Hey. All right. Good guess. You are the proud owner of this Bears water bottle and this Survivor Series wrestling pin. Is this what? the first time you've ever won here? Yeah. Is this the first time you've ever watched the show? Yeah. Oh, well, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you watching. What made you tune in? Do you know somebody who was on the show tonight or...? Ah, ah. Dan's Boy. dancing around right now, Jennifer. <laughs> He's we very have, excited you watch. We have some ultimate shots of Dan Olson later on in this show. Segment. So you don't want to go wanna watch away. it. Dan is, is singing and dancing. So. <laughs> and playing the guitar. He's multi-talented. Definitely. He can also be a floor director. Jennifer, that is one good friend you have on your hands. <laughs> well, tell all your friends to watch. And congratulations. Thanks. And we'll be calling you back for your address so we can send you. So maybe we'll just give it to Dan and have him deliver it to you personally. Okay? Okay, thanks a lot. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Well, we seem to get viewers that uh, like to see our crew. Yeah. But, hey, we'll take them any way we can, I think. I thought think. maybe she would be a friend of one of the girls who was in the tennis segment. You know, mm -hmm. or one of the girls in the tennis segment herself. Well, I think Dan's happy though. So yeah, that's what counts. Yeah, that we have a happy crew out there. Yeah. This could be somebody special, huh? He's red <laughs> and dancing around. Yeah, <laughs> flushing over there. Um, and just just a little note I have here, Brian E. Hmm, I wonder if that could be Brian Esterman. What no. Do you think? no, I think he blew us off tonight. I think he blew us off on Sunday night too, and I think that. He's in big trouble and he knows it, and that's why he's not here. Brian, we're, we're watching gonna come you. over to your house after the show, <laughs> and we're gonna hit you on the head with all of your Bon Jovi records. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna break them all, and we're gonna watch you cry over them. Then, okay. Then, well, do we have um, Rob here? Yes, 
So Rob Brown's here. Mm -hmm. And that'll be coming up next. Mm -hmm. And then the fabulous and Jennifer, you're going to want to watch Dan the Man <laughs> in the record hit video that we did on Sunday. Surfer so. Dan the Man. Surfer Dan the Man. Surfer Dan Surfer the Man. Surfer Man. Yep. So you want to see that, but we'll have Rob coming up next. Mm -hmm. And this is Brian <laughs> Esterman. <laughs> Hello? Wait, go ahead and put it down. What? Are you guys? What? You talking about me? Yeah. <laughs> Where were you on Sunday? I had to go to a party. Yeah, you had to go to a party, right? Ryan, you were home. You had prior commitments. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. Why, why aren't you here now? Are you at another party? My truck broke down. Your tr you don't have a truck. You know, yeah, he does. Yes, I do. Uh -oh. Why didn't you bring one of your other four cars? Because I was stuck down in Belmont and the Kennedy down there. So did you call us and tell us that? No, because I had no way because I was riding in the tow truck. Oh, uh, I see. You were riding Wait, or what riding? tow truck? Uh, Lincoln Laramie Shaw. Lincoln Towing? No, not your favorite towing company, <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> I, mentioned you, I mentioned your name and it gave me a special rate. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Charged you an extra 500 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Brian, you missed it. You've got to stay tuned and watch these videos. They are hysterical. Okay. Yeah. What song did you sing? Um. Well, you'll find out. Uh, we Brian, want to what's, keep everybody what's your suspense. joke? I can't tell it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Can I tell it? Yeah. Steve okay. Hurry yes. up. Okay. What's white and sleeps too? I don't know. A continental cable truck. <laughs> okay, Brian. We're gonna. Sign well, we're there. all out of we, time. We have to get, we have to get into our next segment. What's the difference between Thanks, Chicago Brian. and Chicago? Bye, Brian. Brian. <laughs> You can never get him off the air. He can't I show up at the show, but he's got to make an appearance that's somehow. That's right. That's right. We'll be having a record hit coming up right next, so you want to stay tuned. We'll have lots more North Shore tonight coming up in just a minute. What a goof. Ladies and gentlemen, straight from North Shore tonight, the three surfers with Surfing U.S.A. Solo. gentlemen the three surfers beautiful very nicely Thank done you. that was just Thank beautiful you. Thank you. Oh, listen to that applause take a bow please <laughs>
everybody twist, 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 twist. We're coming up to the four Oz. Welcome back to North Shore tonight. That wasn't exactly the way we had things planned, but I guess that worked out okay because the gentleman joining us now will need no introduction, but I'll introduce him anyways. <laughs> Rob Brahms is here from Record a Hit. Thank you. Welcome to the show once again. Thank you. You were very here much. once before. It seems just like yesterday. Seems like it, yes. Uh, we introduced your wonderful idea that you bring to thousands, casts of thousands, and it's just great because people have so much fun doing this. Yeah, it's pretty outrageous. You guys are uh, very professional looking in oh, that video. I thought you. that was, it was really excellent. Thank you. Really we had excellent. a blast. I mean, I think it's, it's more fun watching it now than we actually had doing it. When you're doing it, you're all nervous. Oh, I sang the wrong words and I did the wrong move. And mm -hmm. We didn't stay with the music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that makes it even better. Tunes. We, we'd start the song and then we weren't supposed to be starting the song. And it was a lot of fun, mm -hmm. though. We really appreciate that you let us do that. Oh, that's and, fine. Um, that's fine. Now, and this is available to the public. I mean, they can come and do this too. Exactly. And we encourage you to do that because it is a lot of fun. And um, why don't you tell us again where you are mm -hmm. and when you're there? Okay. We have a series of regular restaurants every Wednesday at Gamekeepers. That's in Chicago at Lincoln and Armitage, um, 9 o'clock. Every other Friday, Limit Up, 30 South Wacker uh, at 530. And then every other Friday, Hackney's down in Palos Park, 123rd and LaGrange. And then Hackney's up here on Lake Street. Uh, we're there about once a month. And the next uh, show that will be there is December 8th at 8 o'clock. And they can call and make a reservation if they'd like. And the fun thing about it, as they might have seen in the video, uh, we, they can also videotape their performances right there also. Um, if they'd like, and they can take home a videotape uh, for ten dollars and see themselves on the screen, just like you over all did right it, here, over, and over, over and again. as many times as they would like to see. But themselves. and there's, there's no charge to do this; it's totally free, and you also get a cassette for right. free, which is courtesy of Record a Hit and mm -hmm. Budweiser. And Budweiser, the official sponsor of the world famous Record a Hit show. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yes, that's <laughs> poor that's, Jennifer's falling over. That's uh, sorry, Mr. Gluns. <laughs> sorry, um, that's the deal: is that it is free, and uh, they'll always get a free. Tape and we never charge any kind of cover charge or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Except for the video. Right. right. And all you're paying for is, is the video itself. I mean, right. you're not paying for and anybody that's optional. to do anything. Yeah, yeah, that's optional. Right. Right. And it's so much fun. Now, I think we should just go over that the background music and the background lyrics are all there. So you sing the lead, lead vocals right. and do it. And the music is all there for you. So right. you're not, you don't have to stand up there and memorize it. It's, it's up there. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you have a, actually a book in front of you. As you could see in the video, we were cheating. So <laughs> it's like you're the star. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do, uh, you know, get a little confused about that. Uh, the uh, we do provide the words to all the 600 songs, so mm -hmm. they don't have to know the song in advance. Uh, the words are right in front of them. It and does we'll help be, a little bit. But we'll, yeah, it helps. <laughs> Sometimes we'll, it's hysterical uh, we'll when they We'll be there don't. to uh, scream in their ears if necessary to keep them on track or whatever it takes. Uh, we want them to have fun. We try to be supportive. We have applause tracks built in like they just heard the, on the video that you just um, mm -hmm. showed them. So we try to be as supportive as we can. There's a couple other special things you're getting into now. Right. There's two new areas. Uh, one, uh, well, both are very exciting. One's called Super VHS with uh, all kinds of special effects, just like MTV. We Slow motion, stop action, uh, a strobe effect, um, all kinds of things like that. 
And then Pioneer has come out with something called the LaserDisc, which is the same type of idea, except instead of reading the words in a book, you actually see them come up on a screen, kind of like follow the bouncing ball. You see the words change from blue to red when you're supposed to sing them. And uh, also, that makes it particularly fun if you're in a sports bar type atmosphere or anywhere where they have a lot of monitors. The audience can sing along with uh, the performer right there on stage. Oh, so that's, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's like the next phase of Record Ahead, I think, is is being able to create these special effects videos or the, the Pioneer laser disc. Is this still kind of a new concept, this Record Ahead? Is it still going to grow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's new to the United States, but it started in Japan uh, many, many years ago. It's a very large business, estimated well over $50 million a year in Japan. Um, there's a number of cities where it's become very popular here in the U.S. now um, and very much uh, er, you know, early in its um, industry stage right now. But it's growing quickly, and uh, uh, I started it uh, a little over three years ago, mm -hmm. and there was really no one doing it in Chicago at that time. And mm -hmm. now there's a couple of people doing it, plus you'll find you'll just run into it more and more because we do a lot of special events and private parties and festivals in the summer. So mm -hmm. we're not uh, specifically oriented towards restaurants and nightclubs and that kind of thing. Now, usually for the festivals, mm -hmm. um, you have to pay the, the Chamber of Commerce or whatever sponsoring it. In, in, in your situation, do they pay you to be there or do you have to right. pay? Oh, wow, usually uh, they will find a sponsor of some sort to uh, have us there. But, uh, for instance, you know, Taste of Chicago, the biggest festival here in the, in the Illinois area, they had us for two nights last year, and I expect that they'll have us for at least two again. They paid the fee to have Record Ahead on one of their very big stages, and it was, it was a lot of fun because the audience was probably a couple thousand people, mm. big sound system. Boy, that'd be was, scary. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> we were scared to do it with nobody here in the studio. We're like a thousand people. Yeah, it was um, uh, scary, but it was sure fun for the people that got up there and performed. Uh, they went totally berserk and had a lot of fun with it. Okay, we, we don't have any time left, but I, I also want to let you know, if anyone's interested in having their own franchise or just making a music video, you can call 549-SING, and either you can leave a message with Rob Brahms or you can speak to him personally if he happens to be there. Mm -hmm. He's a busy guy, so if you catch him, you're lucky. Um, we want to thank the Nutrier Girls tennis team for coming out and Rob Logan and Dan Olson for their interviews. We also want to thank Peter Patterson, Patterson. Um, for coming out with his lovely artwork. And we're going to close the show with one more video. We want to thank the Garden House. Is there anybody else we need to thank? Rob Brahms. We <laughs> Rob, need to thank yes, him. he's sitting right here with us, and we don't even thank he's him. Who do we enough. need to thank? No. So this is, this is it's great. It's been my pleasure. Just to have everybody come out to Hackney's or wherever. Oh, uh, We are. I think we're all going to go out and do a, do a group so, video. So the people watching tonight can actually see you yes, perform Yes, all of us sing, so I, th I think the next, the next event you do is going to be sworn to people, and they're going to say, I saw you on North Shore tonight, mm -hmm. and you're just going to be famous. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll be the tip in. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we'll be here next week, and we hope you will be here, too, with us. So until then, have a good week. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks, Nora.